Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. A couple of people recently reached out to me with questions about their Boas drinking water. And while this seems like a fairly straightforward concept, it's absolutely imperative that your Boa has a constant supply of clean, fresh drinking water to assure its optimal health. Today I want to give you a few tips and tricks about your Boas drinking water. I'm also going to review some of the different choices of water dishes for boas and of course I'll take out a few beautiful boas for you to admire. If you haven't subscribed yet I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button to assure that you get more videos on all aspects of keeping and breeding boas in captivity. The first question about your boas water supply is where do you get the water from? Someone actually asked me whether they should be filtering the water or using bottled water and the answer is, if your, if your tap water is safe enough for humans, then it's absolutely fine for boas. In fact, most tap water is fine for boas. I use tap water for my boas. Um, you know, my, the bottle, the water supply in the area where I live is perfectly fine and perfectly safe. In fact, most tap water in most parts of the country is actually uh, more regulated than what they put in bottled water if you buy bottled water. Um, so using tap water is not only safe for boas, but it's also far better for the environment because you don't waste all that plastic in the bottles. That being said, if you are unfortunate enough to live in an area where you don't have a safe drinking supply right out of the tap, you may need to filter the water or get special water. But as long as the water is safe for humans, it's gonna be safe for your boas. Another way of looking at it, uh, make sure your boa has water that you would feel comfortable drinking. If you don't feel comfortable drinking water from that source, then you shouldn't give it to your boa. The next topic is what water dish should you use for your boa? For most of my adult boas, I use these plastic water dishes. It's a simple plastic water dish. I actually get these at the dollar store for a dollar each, so they're very economical. They're actually pretty durable. Um, and they're the perfect size. They're about eight inches in diameter and about three inches deep. And because they're much broader than they are deep, it makes it difficult for a boa to tip these over. I've only had once or twice where a boa was able to flood the cage or the tub by tipping these bowls over. You can get thicker plastic bowls at your local pet shop. Um, those will be quite a bit more expensive. I've seen bowls for five to fifteen dollars roughly. Um, and they are thicker plastic, but the durability of this is not an issue. It's plenty thick enough for your boa constrictor and it's not going to wear out. What's nice about these bowls is they're really easy to keep clean. I just take them out and put a little bit of light dish soap in there and rinse it with hot water and I don't get any buildup of any kind of stains. So I should mention it's imperative that you take your water bowl out at least once a week and clean it with light dish soap just to make sure that it stays nice and clean. So before, um, if you wanna get smaller versions of this for baby boas or smaller boas, these bowls also come in like a four inch diameter size, which is perfect for your baby boas and smaller tubs. So before I used these bowls, I had tried using these metal bowls and these I get at the pet shop and they're for you know, dog drinking water, and they're made so that they don't tip because they're very broad and shallow. Um, the problem with these bowls is they're a lot harder to keep clean. So you might notice there's kind of this buildup of this hard water residue. I would always have this residue buildup. Then the other issue is that the snakes would frequently urinate or defecate right on the edge, and I'd get you know feces and urate stuck in this little rubber gasket and it was really hard to keep clean. But um, since then I've gotten rid of all these bowls and I'm just using these plastic bowls for my adult boas. Now I'd like to discuss my water dish solution for my baby and sub-adult boas. So for smaller boas that I'm keeping in tubs like this, this is a 16 liter Sterilite tub, I use actually deli cups. This is a 16 ounce deli cup. But the way that I set it up is I use one deli cup as an actual cup holder. And you can see that's right here. 
what I've done is I burn a couple holes with a soldering iron in the side and then I use a zip tie to secure it to the side through these ventilation holes which I've also put into the tub using a soldering iron and the zip tie holds it in place and then this is the actual water cup that I fill with water and put in there like that and then when I'm cleaning the tubs I can just take the water dish out I can clean it and reuse it a few times and then I can recycle it and this setup makes it really easy to keep clean it puts the water out it's not going to get um, tipped over by your baby snake the snake can get the water but you don't have snakes constantly flooding the tubs by tipping their water dish over which makes it really easy to keep clean some bows will habitually defecate into their water dish if you notice that your bow has done this it's important to immediately clean the dish and thoroughly disinfect it before replacing with clean fresh water if your boa does this a lot you may want to look into soaking the boa in a separate tub so that the boa can relieve himself in this tub of water and that he doesn't get the urine the urates and feces in his own water dish if you notice your boa soaking in its water dish and it's not defecating in there there's a couple other reasons why this might be the case the first is that it could indicate a possible mite infestation so if you have a snake especially a new boa and it's in the water dish and you look in the water dish and you see these little black flecks in there that almost look like poppy seeds from a bagel those are mites and mites are a very very common external parasite they can be really a nightmare to deal with if they get out of hand so if you have a mite infestation I highly recommend you deal with it immediately and you know use whatever means necessary to get rid of those mites because they can be a absolute nightmare if they go unchecked and they can cause all kinds of health problems for your snakes I released a video a couple months ago about mites and how to deal with them and there's a lot of other videos on YouTube about how to deal with mite infestations so I reference you to go check out one of those videos if you have a mite infestation. Soaking in the water dish doesn't necessarily indicate a mite infestation though. Some snakes probably just enjoy the soak. In addition, if your snake is shedding its skin and the air might be a little too dry, the snake will soak in the water dish to uh, loosen up the skin and to help it shed its skin. So if this is the case and you see your snake has gone into the blue or gone opaque, uh, I would recommend that you take your snake and you give it a soak in a tub of lukewarm water outside of its enclosure. And this will um, help it to shed and it will um, probably not need to soak in its water dish when you put it back into this, its cage. So now I wanted to show you a couple of my beautiful boas. This is an adult male Guiana true red tail boa. So this guy is about eight years old. He was produced or uh, born in 2012. Um, he's bred by Mike Eckert. And what I love about this guy is that he doesn't look like a Suriname boa. And there's a lot of debate about whether Guiana and Suriname red tails are the same thing. But this guy is so different from any Suriname boa I've seen um, that, you know, to me this guy really embodies what a Guiana red tail looks like. And the first thing you'll notice is his colors are quite a bit darker than most Suriname boas. Um, if we look at his tail, rather than a bright red tail, he's got this almost maroonish brick red tail. He's got these cool blocky markings. His saddle, as you can see, they're peaked but they're also quite blocky and they're quite dark. His background color has a lot of purplish tones to it. And then he has a lot of splotches and freckles and background markings. So really kind of a dirty looking boa, really nice. And I just, you know, really like this look. And then if you look at his belly, he's got this beautiful, highly speckled belly. Um, so, you know, the true red tails have these really cool speckled bellies to them and this guy has just this really great example of the belly of a true red tail and then if you look at his head he's got these really great eyelash markings and a lot of cool head markings so this is just a really cool 
Guiana red tail boa um, that to me really looks different from Suriname red tail boas. One more boa to share with you. This is a Bolivian Amorali, boa constrictor Amorali, the Bolivian short tail boa. And this guy comes from a bloodline known as the Orange Crush bloodline that was uh, first generated by Joe Terry. And so this guy was born in 2016 and he's bred by Kenneth Proctor. So this guy is coming up on probably five feet now. He's getting pretty close to sexual maturity. He'll probably be ready to breed next year. Um, not quite sure if I'm going to pair him up next year though. But you can see these guys just have this beautiful coloration, this orangey lavender coloration. Um, I've never seen an animal that has a combination of the orange and the purple at the same time. It's almost an indescribable color, but you can see just how beautiful it is. Um, these guys, as the name suggests, they have a short tail. Their tail is only a few tail saddles, looking at his tail. Um, sometimes they have peak saddles. This guy has these thin saddles with a little bit of peaking. Some of them have saddles that look almost like the boa constrictor constrictor peak saddles. Um, and then they have this kind of wide head with these big jaw muscles, almost like a pit bull. But just a really cool looking boa. And then their personality is really great as well. They are one of the more laid back personalities of boa. Um, they don't bite or squeeze too hard. They just kind of explore. Uh, inquisitively um, and they are also probably the most intelligent boa when I open the tubs they kind of look up at me as if though they recognize me and they don't try to escape from the tub they just kind of come out to check things out and you know to say hello so just a really cool pet boa boa constrictor amorali the Bolivian short tail boa so I hope this episode was helpful to you if you have any questions about anything, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, thank you for watching and enjoy your boas.